I'm Michelle and I'm a licensed massage therapist. In this video, we're gonna talk about the lats, also known as latissimus dorsi. This muscle is in the back and is also the largest muscle in the upper portion of the body. If you wanna know the insertion and origin points, you can click on the timestamp below in the comments. I wanted to focus more on the function and how it affects us more so than exactly where it is. I do say it, it's just at the end of the video. So with that, let's get started. So the lats do a lot of movement. So the primary movements are to medially rotate the arm, to adduct the arm, which means to bring it closer to the body, and to extend the arm. So those are the main actions. The rest <laughs> are like the secondary actions, um, things that it also assists with. So it will be trunk flexion, so I'm bending here at the hip, trunk extension, which would be bringing me back, uh, lateral flexion of the trunk, so bending side to side like this. Uh, it also assists with deep inhalation and forced expiration. <sighs> Another thing that it does, it assists in, uh, so with pelvic tilt, you know, if this is the pelvis, this is anterior, and then this is posterior, right? So if this is your hip, if this is like the whole <laughs> anterior, posterior. So it assists with anterior pelvic tilt. Um, but for a scapula also, it helps to depress the scapula, so pushing it down, and also protraction. So that kind of happens when you immediately rotate your arm. Protraction is, if this is the spine and this is the scapula, like this, <laughs> protraction would be going away from the spine. So scapula is going out that way. Retraction is going back this way. But um, the lats assist with protraction of the scapula. So that being said, if our lats get tight, so many things can be affected, right? So how I apply this information for when I'm working with my clients is during assessment, you know, I'm looking to see, do they have an anterior pelvic tilt? Is one arm kind of like closer to the body than the other? Um, are they having any shortness of breath or any issues breathing? Can you tell if they're exhaling all the way? Um, are there, you know, how is their shoulder? Is their shoulder up here? Cause you know, say something is say like the uh, levator is tight and you know, your shoulder's up here, that's putting tension because remember the lat depresses the shoulder. So if it, if it's action is to push it down, but it's up here, that's a little tug of war going on, right? So things like that. Sometimes it may not be the primary problem, but it may be a secondary uh, issue, you know? So little things like that I'll look for. Um, and then of course, what they're telling me. And then I also take into consideration, what is it that they do for their job? How do they sit? Um, a lot of people will start to tell you what they do in life and then they're like, oh yeah, it probably is this muscle, huh? <laughs> so that's usually how I'll apply it. And then when they're on the table, you know, there's little clues that you can tell. Like, you know, if you, when the client gets on the table, if their arms are like this on the sides of the table, is the shoulder kind of wonky like that? When their arms are straight back, is one like more down than the other or is it more up? Things like that, you can tell, is it a really bad stretch for them to have their arms forward? Um, whenever I'm working my clients for upper body, I have their arm back here and here. I do all three and you know, I'll do traction and things, but sometimes if the lat's tight, they may not be able to get all the way up here, right? Um, and then after you release it, they can. So, you know, it's individual to the client. Also, you have to take some, um, if they have past injuries or if they have an acute injury somewhere else, you know, it may not be the lat, it could be somewhere else, but it could be affecting the lat, right? So there's lots of things to think about, um, but communicating with your client is how you figure that out. And also, like I said, during assessment, when you're talking to them, look and see how they're standing, look and see how their posture is, how their breathing is. Um, it all comes, it's, everything is connected. The origin and insertion points of the lat, it has quite a few. So T7 through T12, the thoracolumbar uh, fascia, which you'll see, if you see a picture of the lat, you'll see like the muscle meat. And then at the bottom, you'll see that white, that's the fascia down there that goes right on the hip bone. Um, also, it attaches on the iliac crest on the hip bone, ribs nine through 12, and the inferior angle of the scapula. So say that you have a test or something like that, or if you're working on somebody and you're really trying to think like, what's going on here? Just think about what the lat does. Um, so if it's inhalation, exhalation, it must attach on the rib somewhere, right? It must be somewhere there. 
If you are, if your client's having some hip pain, um, or you notice that they have an anterior tilt, try it, you know, that thoracolumbar fascia. Um, if you think about, you know, so say this is a scapula, the inferior angle on the bottom, it must pull it down. Can't push it up, right? <laughs> it must pull it down. So depression of the scapula, you know? So things like that, if you kind of think about what it does, you can kind of tell where it originates from. The insertion point is on the bicipital groove on the humerus, on the upper arm. So with that, that's, that's how it's doing its main action and everything, right? And you know, you can feel it. That's another way you can kind of tell what the lat does or what any muscle does. You move around and you see what you can feel. If you really kind of think about it and you feel it, you're like, oh yeah, I can kind of feel that in my back where it's coming from versus like, oh yeah, it's just coming from my arm, you know? So there's that. <laughs> Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, I want to kind of do videos more like this, like relating how the muscle works and then what you see in clients. I'll get better about explaining my uh, work process <laughs> so it maybe make more sense. But hopefully this was helpful. If you liked the video, shoot me a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.